What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to break down my trading day, which is December 28, 2021. So today I just day traded Amazon. I made about 1700 bucks for the on the day and uh, kind of want to dive into that trade, right? Now, a few things about today. Today was a risk off day, meaning I wasn't as aggressive. I traded, I think, about six contracts on this. Nothing too heavy. Uh, market wasn't presenting a lot of opportunities. And also, you know, because of yesterday's trade, uh, having a big loss, kind of didn't want to go in heavy with Amazon and be too biased, right? So now with that being said, let's go into this trade and just kind of understand where I got in, where I got out and understand my mindset. Now, before I get into that, I just want to break this down. So uh, I Amazon was on my watch list for the night before. So let me just go over that so you guys understand the mindset that I had before taking any trade. So last night I put Amazon on my watch list. Uh, showcasing that we had a heavy rejection on this today, despite a green red, a green day from the market, watching for a weak market tomorrow and a 3380 level for conviction on this 3390 to 3380 could be a sell off point or a bounce zone depending on strength. So when we go to today around 3380, you can see we got multiple bounces and we got nice conviction here for continuation. And obviously this started moving up pretty nice. Now, the reason I did not take this bounce trade, I'll show you where I got in and everything is because obviously market was not uh, directional today. Market was very choppy, right? And a lot of times whenever I take my trades, I want to identify SPY. I want to identify the key levels on the market, understand what levels to pay attention to. And SPY did not give me that uh, for today. So going into this trade, what happened? So I made about 7% on the trade, had a 2.35 R, uh, put 22K, like I said, size down day, nothing heavy, uh, traded six contracts. And now my entry on this was around 943 and 943. I got in about six contracts. So let's go to 943 and understand that. So this is where I got in 943. Now, the reason I got in around 943 is once we got that huge bounce, I was looking for a continuation rejection. So just to kind of give you guys uh, an idea of that, right? Let's look at SPY. Let's look at 943. This is where we are on SPY 943. This is where we are around here, 943. Now, second reason I kind of got in there is because we had we also had the VWAP rejection. So I'm going to walk you through that, right? Now we look at this trade, uh, stock opens up, stock opens up pretty weak, goes right into 3380. The trade that I should have taken after seeing tons and tons of rejection uh, for this stock was I should have taken a short around 3400. And right when we broke this 3400 zone, I should have taken a scalp into 3380. Uh, I think that was the good trade uh, or a good setup for the day or a possible bounce. There was also a good trade right here, which was part of my game plan, right? That I have listed right here. Now, obviously those two trades did not go through. So right when I saw the first bounce into 3,400, which was my key inflection point towards the upside, I saw the first rejection kick in. After seeing the first rejection kick in, I'm like, okay, rejection is kicking in. We're seeing the next level for the stock not holding as well. So I'm going to enter in puts right here. So I entered six puts, right? I tried to originally get entered for 10. I only got six filled, right? My size was supposed to be 10. That's the... That's what happens when you use think or swim, right? So I try to get filled 10. I got six, uh, but even 10, pretty small day. Yesterday, if you guys saw recap, my yesterday recap video, I had about 30 contracts. Some days I have about 40. So my positions add up to 100, 120K sometimes. So looking at this position, which is about what, 22K? Uh, pretty small, you know, not, not, not a big position uh, based on the positions I usually take. Uh, after that, I took three off. This was a super early off. This was a mess up on my end. I'll talk about that. At 946, I took half off. So at 946, uh, right around here, I took half off. Now here, I was trying to put a high limit order, uh, meaning I was trying to put a, I was trying to put the sell on a high ask, right? So on on options, you got the bid, you got the ask. So I try to hit the ask way far out. So if it does start moving, I'll get filled on the three. I accidentally hit sell on bid. When I hit sell on bid, my fill was not the best. You guys can see I got filled around $38.95, made about $279 on that trade itself, when in reality, I should have been around 42 bucks. So I left about another $1,500 on the trade here just because of this stupid order mistake, 
right? And just to clarify what that order mistake was for some people that don't understand, a lot of times when I'm trading options, there's a bid and an ask for the options. Now, when the stock is trading sideways or I'm looking to get out of the stock, not rushing to get out, but I'm looking to build a position, I'll put an order in, a limit order, closer or above the ask. So typically when the stock goes in my favor, the option premiums will sell for a higher price point because they're already listed on the ask point. So when it does start moving, I wouldn't have to scramble to put in my order. But in this situation, I put it at the bid. So I was, I, you know, I, the bid was around 38 something and the ask was around 41, 42 and I hit 38, which is why I got, I exited around here. So that was a dumb mistake on my end. But if you guys see, Four minutes later is where I scaled out around 42, 43 bucks, which was around 950. And that was right here. This is where I got out and getting out right here. That netted me about 1500 bucks in the trade. And uh, basically that was the whole trade. And now you look at the whole idea afterwards. You guys can see we have entered a chop zone. Now, why did I exit here? Right. Uh, some people may see this and say, oh, wow, you got out at the perfect time. The reason I exited here is a lot of times whenever I'm in an option trade, primarily an option trade, if I get in before the move happens, option premiums really, really start moving well. So I like to take profits off the table because if we go in here again, there is a high probability we might see a bounce. So I don't want to risk that and give up this profit. So I start scaling out or exiting here. And if we see consolidation or hold, I may look to exit again or rebuild a position. So that's why I kind of got out around this 3386, 3388, uh, 3338, uh, 88, sorry, on the stock price opposed to waiting for this perfect bottom that, you know, obviously never exists. And then I didn't take another trade for the day because if you guys just take a look at SPY, look at SPY. Look at the market all over the place. No real conviction, no real direction, pretty chop. And that's why I wanted to go, you know, with, with a size off day with uh, low risk. Uh, but even putting size down and everything out the way, like I told you guys, the main thing I want you guys to really focus on in positions, uh, besides looking at size or what the end number is, is just look at the R multiple. Look at what a person made based on the risk amount. On this trade, I risked about 700 bucks, made about 1700, should have made about 3K. And once again, that 3K should have kicked in if my orders, you know, if I was better on executing these orders. And that's a, that's a thing you guys got to keep in mind with options. If you can execute orders well, especially when you trade these big names like Amazon, the spreads are 2 to $3 wide, right? The bid may be at 38 the ask may be at 42 So if you just get filled that mid or ask, that itself is going to make you a good amount of money. Like that, that right there, me getting filled on this from 39 to let's say 43 which is about four points, right? Would have made me a few extra hundred bucks, right? Opposed to making $279. I would have made a couple hundred extra bucks. And obviously with more and more size, that turns into thousands and thousands of dollars. So with that being said, that is my trade breakdown for the day. Uh, not a big day. And this is also just to show you like, you're not going to have massive days. Like if I had phenomenal days, 1700 bucks, 20, I lost 26 yesterday, made 75, made 41, made 33, like, you know, some days it's better to not have a trade or just be green than to like try to duplicate or replicate the success or the trades you've had. So if you are making 10, 5K a day, don't say I have to wake up every day and make 10, 5K. Some days just not trading and being flat is being, it's better than being red 26K or being up a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. So just being green for the day is better than being red. And that's a mindset you guys should keep. So it doesn't kind of force you into taking bad trades and keeps you disciplined uh, in the long run. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.